This is John Paul Rye. Some people call me. So it's actually hard to keep track of which media source is a shill, which isn't, which is neutral. And apparently The Guardian is a very, very shilly site. And they go right ahead and say they are social justice warriors by saying the past movie history is sexist and racist. Let's get into this article. It's about... Maybe you saw the thumbnail, the black lady who's playing James Bond, which isn't actually James Bond or 007, but she's now filling in that role and making a reboot of another same old story like we just saw with The Little Mermaid. Here we go. So here's The Guardian. The new 007 is a black woman. Don't make her a Bond girl because Bond girls are so bad because, you know, James Bond couldn't be a strong, sexy, straight man who was an international confidence spy who got women. What's wrong with sexy women being in movies? I need that really explained to me. Or sexy men. Or sexy, heterosexual anyone. What's, what's the problem? Why not? Not everyone in this world is intelligent. There are some women who are not that intelligent and they happen to be sexy. And they can use that to their advantage. And they get by. And some of them make out great. And there's not anything wrong with that if the man they're seeing is happy with them and they're happy with that person. It makes no difference. Everybody has different attributes and we can use them differently. If they're a bad person, if they steal and they hurt other people, that's when they're bad, not just because they're sexy. Being sexy doesn't make someone bad whatsoever. What makes someone bad is when they write a shit article and they call out the past of incredible movies for being racist. Here they say there was so much celebration on social media because a black female is playing James Bond. I didn't really see it. Excuse me, 007, whatever. I guess so. I didn't really see celebration. I saw people kind of like, huh? Didn't we just have this like a week ago with The Little Mermaid? Huh? So they're going to make every single male character from the past who was an iconic, legendary role now into a woman? Wow. What a celebration. What a great idea. Of course, they couldn't come up with new characters. They need characters that are already created and already established and already have a fan base. But that's not going to work because the fan base likes the original character, not what they're creating now. They say here, The difficulty with changing legacy characters is that the original is generally seen as the iconic version and successors are temporary and secondary. As a result, the non-white or non-male versions of the character can be treated as afterthoughts or sidekicks or as mistakes to be quietly pushed from center stage. And you know what? Unfortunately, that's true. Not about the color of their skin, but the secondary character coming after the original. Because the original is usually, yes, the iconic and the legendary one who went through the test of time. They built the franchise, they built the fan base, and they won the love of the fans. And that's it. It's history. It's done. You can't keep moving forward and changing them and making them new. It's, yeah, it's pretty much set in stone. That's it. I mean, you have to take the influence from them and create your own great character. So if she was like 005, 008, 009, and then James Bond was retired, that would be different. Now she could be her own character. She could be great. And the thing is, James Bond's supposed to be retired. Of course, we've been here. Luke's a hermit, John Connor's dead, James Bond is retired. This is getting really freaking old with these storylines. It's such bad writing. It's so obvious already. They say here, fans have been hoping for a black actor to play James Bond at least since 2012. Not sure where they all are. I would love to have a black actor in the franchise, like I just said, as 005, 006, whatever. Make them as tough as awesome in their own way as James Bond. That's not the issue, but leave James Bond alone. Leave the original alone. That's all anybody's asking who has like-minded opinions to me, who is making these videos, we're saying leave the original characters alone. That's all we're saying. So here's the whole social justice warrior, we are SJWs at the Guardian aspect. Here it is, and here's the bottom line for SJWs, by the way. Casting black female actors as legacy characters is a great step towards rectifying the historical racism and sexism that has led to a disproportionate number of those characters being white men. Now, yes, 
a lot of those characters were absolutely white men. We could go on the list right now, and they were. There's no arguing about that, but that doesn't make them sexist or racist just because white men created white characters. So, yeah, white men did control the business. That happened. That's a fact. But they happen to make good characters. They happen to make actually really great, classic, legendary characters. So, leave those characters alone. And if you feel the past was sexism and racism driven, then you create characters now on your own. And if you are in the business and you do have this belief, this SJW belief, make some good characters. Don't use the ones from the people you're calling racist and sexist to help build the franchise back. You forget the franchise. You say, F-U-C-K the franchise. We don't want that. It was sexist. It was racist. We're making our own franchise. But they can't do that. So they're just creating a mess. That's all it is. It's just a mess. Do I want to see this movie? Uh, not really. I mean, it just would seem kind of odd. My best example is Uhura from Star Trek. She's a black lady. Let's um, put her up here right now. There she is. She's from the 1960s show. She's one of the main characters in Star Trek. And by the way, Star Trek is one of the most diverse, groundbreaking shows from the 1960s. They had Asian, they had European, they had a black lady, and Spock is kind of, I think, kind of like a Jewish guy a little bit. Anyway, they had a great diverse cast. And if Ohura here was changed to let's say, a guy with an orange beard and orange hair, and they said, this is a horror now. You know why? Because it's supposed to be a horror. That's it. We had to get rid of, you know, the black lady horror and put a white male in here. I'd be like, well, that's like, that's just not a horror. That's just not the same character. So it, it doesn't really work. It would feel really weird. You know, Captain Kirk comes up and says, hey, can you translate this Klingon stuff? And the like, yeah, sure can, Captain. I'd be like, huh? That's, that's just weird, you know? Whether I liked it, let's say in the worst case scenario, I was racist and I liked it. I was like, haha, now Ohora is white. I'd have to still feel like it's just still not Ohora. Anyway, that's a good example. She's a classic character, I'm not gonna lie. She's not my favorite Star Trek character, but she's part of the original cast. It's not the same without her. And I've been watching Star Trek since I was a kid and she's a great character. Anyway. You guys let me know what you think of that down below. I'm doing shout outs, special thanks, stuff like that. Let's do a shout out right now. Shout out goes to Rules Rants. I don't give them no shout outs. We've been kind of working together, kind of in the same main group for a while. So yeah, check them out. Great channel, great guy. That's it. Gotta go. See you next time. Yeah, subscribe here too, please. I just messed up the ending. Yeah, that's it.